What is up you guys? I'm Jake Adams. You're watching Reef Builders video and today I have something different and special for you. This video is basically in the series of the Aquarium Tuber Tag Challenge. This is a challenge that's been put out by various aquarium YouTubers to get to know each other a little bit more and I'm definitely going to take this opportunity to not make it just about myself and just uh, discuss a little bit more uh, about aquariums in general. So to get started, let me tell you a little bit of background about me because I've been writing and speaking and you know, being a general coral guy in the uh, American hobby for quite a long time. And a lot of you might know what I've been up to maybe over the last 10 years. And, uh, but I have been keeping aquariums much longer than that. When I really became an aquarium hobbyist was back in 1995. And that was also a goldfish tank that quickly became a community aquarium fish tank and then ballooned into about 20 aquariums around the house of all different types. I got my first reef tank in 1996. It was a used 75 gallon tank and it had very high output uh, fluorescent tubes with a Berlin skimmer and a mag drive on the return pump. And uh, that was a beautiful tank. I really wish that I had uh, better photo skills and photographic equipment to document it back then. Also, since I was 14, uh, I decided the first job I would ever get would be an aquarium job. And ever since then, uh, all but a couple jobs have been aquarium related. Uh, everywhere from working the retail store, I did that several times in three different states. I published my first article, I think, in about 2005. And since then, there's been at least 100 articles uh, spread out over publications in lots of different countries, but always in English. And uh, I've probably given about 100 presentations to reef clubs and aquarium events as well. I organized Reef Stock, the Denver Aquarium Conference, uh, way back in 2007. And we had our first uh, event in 2008. And next year, in February, I will be uh, organizing the 10th Reef Stock. And it's just crazy that it's been so long. Um, and that the show is still going and still successful, and most importantly, that I still enjoy it. Reef Builders was founded by my partner, Ryan Grip, I think in 2006, 2007, and I joined at the end of 2008. So there's a common misconception that I uh, started Reef Builders, but I actually have a partner in the background who pulls all the strings, just like the man in the, behind the curtain. So he takes care of everything that you don't see, and I take care of everything that you do see. So with that, I think you have a good amount of background information about me to understand the answers to the questions of the YouTube Aquarium Tuber Tag Challenge. So the first question is reef tank or fish only aquarium? And when I started in the aquarium hobby, most people didn't have a reef tank. They had a fish tank. And I think we've really lost sight of what a fish tank can be. Um, the LED lighting revolution has not hit fish tanks in the same way that it has for the reef aquarium world. But really, if I had to pick, of course it's gonna be a reef tank because you can put so many different things in a reef tank. And at the end of the day, I am a coral junkie. You know, I wear it on my skin. This is my one tattoo, it's an octocoral polyp. I've had that for about 10 years. And um, there's just no question, if I had to have one tank, it would definitely be a reef tank. It's not just about what you can put in it, but what you can put on it. And fish tanks are amazingly enjoyable. They can be so much fun because they're so simple. Um, you know, you just have a return pump, lighting, heater, protein skimmer, and anything else you add beyond that is up to you. And it's probably not necessary. So my old fish tank um, was actually built really simple. But on a reef aquarium, you can put all kinds of gadgets, cool new pumps, controllable lights, uh, funky little skimmers, and it's just so much more fun to play with a reef aquarium than a fish tank. Second question is soft or hard coral? And that one is an easy question. Although my tattoo is of a soft coral polyp, stony corals are so much more rewarding to grow in an aquarium because as a soft coral grows, that colony can expand and contract, and you don't really have the same sense of gratification uh, when it comes to coral growth. And with a stony coral, you can see how far the skeleton is extending and how much it's grown. And once you have that growth, you've got it. You know, the coral can die and you still have that skeleton. And so 
stony corals are definitely where it's at. This is what I get excited about and look at when I'm at the reef store, when I'm at other people's aquariums, and especially when I'm diving. The stony corals actually represent a lot more diversity on a wild reef than, they, than the soft corals do in most zones, at least in my opinion. My favorite coral. All corals are my favorite, but um, there's no question that one of my favorite, favorite groups is the disc corals, the fungias, the cycloceras, herpolitha, all the ones in that group. And the reason that that group is my favorite bunch of corals uh, to have in an aquarium is because a friend of mine and I, back in the day, we were among the patient zeros for uh, Acropora redbucks, Tagastes copepods. And I'll never forget the mindset of how much effort I put into my Acropora collection at the time. And I actively asked myself, what is my new favorite group of coral? And I decided I needed a, a coral that uh, was gonna be really hardy, very colorful. And uh, I came on the disc corals, especially the fungus and the cyclos. Uh, orange cycloceris, red cycloceris, all those different colors. It's just one of those corals that lives in any kind of environment and any kind of aquarium, it's really easy to take care of. They move around a little bit so they have personality and they can inflate and deflate and uh, they can crawl over other corals to a certain degree. And that's really, really cool and very unique among corals. Um, the behavior of cyclo cycloceris and related disc corals and the fact that they tough it out with the SPS corals all over the place is also one of the things that makes me love uh, cycloceris in particular. My favorite fish, what is my favorite fish? Again, I love all fishes, and uh, I don't really have a good answer for the, this question, but I can definitely say definitively that my favorite group of fishes is angelfish. There's angelfishes all throughout the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean. There's small ones, medium ones, large ones, all different colors. Some of them are really common. Some of them are uh, really, really rare. And um, this is a group of, of fish that just keeps me really, really busy. And this is why I particularly love angelfish. Uh, if you check the playlist on this YouTube channel, you'll see that uh, the angelfish playlist is definitely the most fleshed out. I can't say that I have a single favorite species, and I think it's safe to say that angelfish are my favorites. Jumping right into number five, what is my least favorite coral? I thought this was a little bit of a weird question, but there's actually one or two that come to mind, and they are the small encrusting little species of octocorals. Now I'm talking about what's going, what's being called a sympodium and um, the small blue anthelia, which is actually a bathelia, and particularly paraerythropodium. Paraerythropodium is an encrusting gorgonian from the Caribbean, and it's just so, so tenacious in its growth, and it just looks ugly. It looks like growing mud. I really, really don't like it. I encourage people to remove it uh, anytime they see it, but uh, in the past, the paraerythropodium uh, was a lot more common because we didn't have that many corals to play with, and so this one just kind of made the rounds and it spread from tank to tank. Um, thankfully, I haven't seen a big patch of paraerythropodium in a while, so no worry about having that one in your aquarium. My least favorite fish. I had to give this one a lot of thought because, again, I love all fish. I don't think any fish are junk. I feel like all fish in the prime of health is just as beautiful as the next one. But if there's a group of fish that is my least favorite in aquariums, it has to be seahorses. And this is because over many years, I've had to explain to so many people in the aquarium shop why they couldn't get a seahorse or why they shouldn't. And, you know, multiply the number of times I've had this conversation with people times five or 10 minutes it takes to get the point across. And uh, you know, I've probably lost a couple weeks of my life trying to talk people out of seahorses. I love seahorses. I just don't really enjoy them in aquariums. Um, they're really cool in a seahorse specific aquarium. Um, but that also kind of gets old. No, no hating on the seahorses. I love seahorses in general, just not really in, the, in an aquarium environment. So question number seven is a little bit interesting because it definitely reflects on whoever started this questionnaire. And the question is, homemade or commercial food? And this is clearly coming out of the DIY community because that's not the right question. For me, the right question is prepared or frozen food. Uh, a fraction of people of Aquarius actually make their own food 
it's it's neat, it's interesting, uh, you can get a sense of satisfaction, but I haven't made food myself. And by make, I mean mix up uh, a congealed mix and put that in the refrigerator in so many, many, so many years. Um, there's just so many ready-made foods on the market that um, for me, it's just a no-brainer. No, I don't really use homemade food, but that brings me up to the proper question, and that is prepared or frozen food. And for me, I feel like I go prepared food all the way. Um, frozen food is great and we love our fish, but I feel like people definitely um, overfeed their fish. It's, it's a conundrum that uh, a lot of people who have expensive fish, who really love their fish, feel like they're doing their fish a favor by feeding them nothing but the richest frozen food. And I feel like this is bad for the aquarium environment, and in long term, it's actually really detrimental to the health of the fish. Um, frozen food is really rich, really fatty, and uh, really you should be feeding it a few times a week, not a few times a day. You know, I feel like prepared foods have gotten really good, really balanced. Um, they're low or low in fat, but balanced in nutrition, so frozen food really has its use when you're getting an aquarium fish uh, conditioned and acclimated to aquarium life, if you're conditioning it to breeding, or uh, you know as a special treat. But really prepared foods, flake foods, pellets, and granules are the way to go. The other question is kind of a funny one. It's a LED T5 or metal halide. And uh, you know there's something to be said for an aquarium that's properly lit with any of these ones. LEDs are really efficient, they last forever, and they have great coloration. Uh, T5 lighting can bring out the pastel look like nothing else we know. And uh, there's just something about a large tank with some really bright, powerful metal halides that, uh, you know, that feeling will never go away when you walk up to a tank and it's lit with metal halides and you see the shimmer, it's just the closest thing to the ocean. Um, but for me, it's all about LEDs because I like to light, have a lot of aquariums. Uh, on the one hand, I totally, totally lost the taste for replacing tubes. Uh, you know, some of you that have been reefing for maybe like the last five years and I've only used LED, you know, don't remember or don't know the challenge that we had when it came to replacing tubes, replacing lamps, you know, it was a high expense, but mostly it just led to an unstable aquarium environment. And with LEDs, uh, you don't have to change the lights. Um, they look the best. Uh, I can dial them in from my phone with various applications. And uh, most of all, they just reduce my overall energy usage so I can have a lot more aquariums because if I had to use just T5 or just metal halides, I'd be restricted to one or two tanks. And so for me, LED is the way to go. Number nine on the questionnaire is probably one of the best questions. It's what would be my dream tank? And uh, this was an easy, easy answer to come up with because for me, my dream tank would be lit with sunlight. I don't even care what kind of tank it is, um, but I have this dream of basically having a tank that's lit by the sun. Ever since I was young, you know, I couldn't afford big uh, expensive lights and I've always wanted to use whatever was available and sunlight is readily available. And so for me, a sunlit reef tank is just, that's my dream because although it would be too bright for a wide variety of corals and animals, um, you can always subtract light with filters, with different layers of plastic and uh, use different colors to get the, the spectrum that you want. I've seen a few examples of aquarium corals grown under sunlight, uh, notably the Waikiki's Outdoor Aquarium and a few others. And there's just, there's just no comparison. When you see that thick, luxurious SPS stony coral growth, uh, there's just no comparison. So one day I'm gonna have the right space to make use of sunlight and everything else is, is secondary. You know, I'll probably still use some LED accents to um, get the right look in certain places or to supplement the light when it's winter time or to see the tank at night. Um, but, uh, but yeah, sunlight, that's where it's at. The final part of the challenge is to nominate some people to participate in the Aquarium Tuber Tag Challenge. Now, I'm definitely not first out of the gate when it comes to this uh, video topic. Uh, and so a lot of the most prolific Aquarium Tubers, YouTubers, have 
already participated in this challenge. So um, I really had to rack my brain for three people that I feel most of you, most of the aquarium public would really get a kick out of learning um, their answers to these questions. So first up, I'm gonna tag Uaru Joey, uh, king of DIY. He feels like he's answered a lot of these questions throughout his videos, but I think it's, I still think it'd be really cool to see what he has to say in a concise uh, video format. The other two are actually not YouTubers, but they really should get in front of the camera and answer these questions. And uh, this is Kevin Cohen of Live Aquaria and Joe Caparata of Unique Corals. Both of these guys are renaissance men when it comes to the aquarium hobby, having been in the hobby as long or longer than I have. And uh, Kevin Cohen, being the director of Live Aquaria, should have some really unique insights, um, especially with a freshwater slant and uh, you know being from the business side. And Joe Caparata owning uh, Manhattan Aquariums in New York and Unique Corals in Los Angeles uh, also has a really uh, novel take on what up for answers to this challenge. So Joey, Kevin, and Joe, uh, do your best, man. Just get behind a camera. If you need the list of questions to the Aquarium Tuber Tag Challenge, just hit me up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found some of the answers informative, and I'll catch you guys next time.